good to be back. How do you feel being back, Paolo? Thank you. <laughs> good, thank you. How are you, Marvin? I'm cool, I'm cool. Good. And Mala? I'm all right, thank you. Great. We're trying at the moment to Skype someone, but she's not... Uh, keep trying to... keep trying to do the... Um, mm -hmm. to see if she'll get... It's the lady from the womb survivor, Olga, who's in Dublin. But if she's not coming through at the moment, and uh, so we will leave it. But we've got an amazing guest here now. I met Mervyn. <laughs> I met Mervyn on Friday at Wickham uh, Art Centre. Art Centre, Art for Everyone. Open mic. Open mic. Um, um, I think you need to put that down a bit or we won't see Paolo. <laughs> leave it up, leave it up. <laughs> no, you're having a filthy. <laughs> um, they run that at once every once every month, open mic. That's right. So there's there's loads of musicians, um, arts for everyone, centre. There's loads of musicians, uh, the odd comedian and the odd poet. I, I mean odd, as in single, not weird. Not not weird. So I'm like the resident poet. <laughs> That's right. And um, we, we found you on Friday and we interviewed you and I'm really happy to have you here, especially also you're Irish. Northern Irish. You're Northern Irish, I'm Dublin. <laughs> but it's really good to have you here. And um, so basically you told me last week, we're talking about creativity and we're talking about grief, we're talking about lost twin syndrome and you know, leading on to what you told me um, that basically you started writing after the death of your father. That's right, yeah. So you used your grief to channel into your poetry, is that right? That, that, that's correct. Uh, the, book, the book, this is a book. Let's have a look. It's called Derry Boy. Derry's the place where I was born. Right. The first three pages deal with the last... Is this you? It's um, a cousin. Okay. I'd like to say it was me, but it's not. <laughs> that's being honest. It's beautiful. I'm on page eight, by the way. Um, okay. The first three pages are very tearful because it's the last conversation I had with my father, and my mother passed away the year before. So I went. I got the, the, the same phone call. You better come. You better come. So I went over. Hospital bed. He had a drip and and breathing out of it. You know, with the oxygen. And for some weird reason, I took my son's GCSE poetry book. And. It kind of like had all the classics, William Butler, Yeats, Lake Isle of Innes, Free, Charles the Light Brigade, Rupert Kipling, If. And I basically read my father. Poems as he was dying. And you the, right? he, yeah, he, 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 he passed voice. away. He passed away a couple of days later. And the whole issue about grief was that um, I started recalling my childhood in Ireland in Derry when I was a kid. My mum used to send us every every year to uh, the farm where she was born, which is on the coast. She suffered from a brain tumour, so she, she, we were sent away from a small village up to the coast. And the farm was there, and we spent summers in the farm. And all these memories came, came spilling out onto the um, page like so many tears. And the poems just wrote themselves. I can't explain mm. it. Well, that's creativity, um, as you know. So it just comes from somewhere, doesn't it? And and then that somebody said that you should read them, and so I started reading them. Somebody said I should publish them, so I published them. And now um, I've got this title as a poet. So basically I read my stuff, I read all this stuff, I read classics, and I'm planning my next book. Wow. So, would you like to read us? Which is your favourite one? Do you, they're all your favourites. Well, I'll, the yeah, first I'll one is um, the first one here is um, these pictures. By the way, are who did the pictures? The, the, the these are actual pictures of, of, of us, us as kids when we were on the mm -hmm. farm. So when my mo when my sister was clearing out my mother's um, my mother's um, house, and Beautiful. I asked her for all the photographs yeah. of the farm, and that's my father there and. That's me and the horse. The horse is called Violet. And if you turn over, um, Paolo, to the first poem. Picture of you. It's, um, I'm actually on page eight, but um, yeah. this one. Page that, eight. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And it's, it's an awakening. It's an awakening of the spirit. It's an awakening mm -hmm. of, um, of, uh, of, 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 of self-discovery. 
and it's about waking up on the farm as a child. Right. And the sights and sounds and the things you hear, and it's called A Night Awake. So would you like to read it to yeah, us? Yes, I'm, I'm just composing I don't need because I... Oh, you remember it. The burn would run all night and morning, gurgling seductively outside my bedroom window, golden brown and bubbling over the peat moss moor, sounds of scratching fowl and swishing cow come to you into the milking parlour. A sigh screamed at the runt of the litter, and I, with one eye open, feel the gentle dairy air lift the lace curtain and blow in a good morning with its sickly smell of sweet manure and freshly squeezed milk from blue daughters. A clang of creamy cans, a get out of here cry the cats that crave fresh cream, and I awake on my uncle's farm. Oh, sweet, sweet memory. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. It's, so, it's beautiful. I mean, you say that you never wrote before, and yet you came up with such pathos. Pathos? Pathos? Pathos, uh, pathos, whatever it's called. Uh, I write a lot of, of, of musicals, and I've, I've written mm. a lot, but I've never written like that. I, You know, the words don't come to me like that. So where do you, where, I don't how know. do you think this happens? Do you think maybe it came from your dad's spirit? I mean, do you believe that? That's, that's, that's possible that he, this was like a family gift. Mm -hmm. And um, the second poem is um, about, we, we used to work as kids on the farm and we used to work for the neighbor's farm where we lived in the village in Castle Dawson. And we used to get 50p a day for garden potatoes. We worked from morning to dusk. And it's called, the second one is called um, And We Were Kings. It's a feeling of having done a day's honest work and, and being given a ten, a 10 shilling note or a pound note or 50, you know, 10 shillings in your hand and running home. And it's called um, And We Were Kings. We ate that day with grubby hands, silken flowered farls straight from the griddle, the earth or table, the sky roof, the farmer's wife, rough, red and rude, poured liquid from the billy can. Golden tea fired her belly and strengthened her spine as she stooped and skimmed and shook the soil from those golden nuggets raped in the virgin furrow. At close of day, we bumped along, tired on the tail end of the tractor trailer, grasping a crumpled brown ten shilling note. Raced home, a field laid bare, nay, not a backward glance. And we were kings for many a day. Oh my God. That is absolutely incredible. It's just like reading, <coughs> you know, Yeats or, you know, real poetry. Why would you go that far? <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Um, the only thing that I can identify a little bit is not with writing poetry, but when you were talking about doing a day's work and, you know, as kids, and I wrote a book about my dad called The Cat Has Nine Lives mm -hmm. and my dad grew up in an orphanage and he was on the streets mm -hmm. and he said the same thing is they used to get the horse tails and they used to sell them you know on the streets mm -hmm. and then they get the manure and sell it to the farmers mm -hmm. and stuff and it, it's so real it's like you can, you can see it I, I would love to make a film you know and show how this is happening you know how it happens mm -hmm. And maybe that will happen one day. <laughs> so the kind of thing that happened was that these memories were just part of my DNA. And the, the emotional shock of losing both parents, literally one after another, just pulled the plug of out, out of the pot of creativity and this stuff spilled out. Now, if you ask me now to write a poem, that's this stuff is like from catharth, catharthis, cathartic. Cathartic, yeah. And then I thought, well, now I'm supposed to be a poet. And how can I write and what do I write about? So this was the, the whole thing about self-confidence. Um, people love this stuff. They love to hear when you go to see an audience. That basically, they just like you do. They just go into sort of like an introspective, deep, deep thought. And they don't applaud until you finish like three or four poems till the very end. But um, it's just, it's a gift from my father to, to me. Because he was a great reader, a great he, he, he 
used to talk a lot about his poetry and stuff like that. Yeah. What did you do before you started writing? What was the, did you have a job? Or what was your income? How did you um, work? Well, what did I do before I started writing? writing I, I, didn't, I didn't or? write. Um, I've always been interested in, in languages. I mean, I, I'm fluent in Spanish. I speak Chinese as well. Wow. I've lived abroad in, in South America. And so language, even though I followed a traditional science degree, this new me, poet, whatever you want to call it, just recently, like six, seven, five, six years ago. Um, my, my job is just um, in sales and I sit on the phone and talk to people. My favorite one, you asked for my favorite one. Yeah, it's it's about, um, if you could find the picture there, Pablo. It's called, um, yeah, it's, it's about, um, if you could show the picture. And we will go away. And you will show you it to see the it camera. It's, it's pictures Beautiful. of us in the hay feed, yeah? Mm -hmm. The book is Old Dairy Boy. Okay. And it's Mervyn, what's your surname, Mervyn? Cook. Mervyn Cook. From Castle Blossom. I'm also actually from the same part of the world as the great late Seamus Heaney. He was born in the same timeline that he's been writing for 40 years when I just started. Oh, wow. And, and for w weird coincidences, um, in Chinese, um, my Chinese name is a transliteration of the word Marvin. It's Moen, Moen, Marvin. And the character for the Mo, the Mo character means ink, oh and the Wen God. character means literature. Uh, is that spooky or what? That's incredible. Here's what I'll, um, I'll read this one. We were boys. <laughs> this is my fa favorite. Can one. we turn that phone off? Because I don't want to interrupt. Thank you. This is um, was published over. Uh, this book self-published, by the way. It's not through traditional publishing channels. But if you just Google Dairy Boy, it comes up number one. You can see all the pictures. Okay. It's about working in the hay fields in, in the summertime. We laid her back against the sack, wiped sweat and hay seed from her brow. Cap cocked to shield the sun, thirst slain in the billy can. We squinted at swallows in their drunken dives with no rhyme, no reason, no root to roost. Her limbs tired and toiled those fields to sunset, where stacks some small give birth to bigger ones. The day the baler came, with reverence we accepted its offspring into her blistered hands, and nursed that harvest home, with many a shout watch out as one bale tumbled from the trailer into the pressure cooker barn. And we built castles that summer eve, Tight to the tin high heaven roof, castles for cattle whose winter weary days were bunged up in dunged up silent byres. And they would chew the cud and chew the cud and suck the summer dew when winter froze the ground and we were boys in the spring of our lives. Wow, it's just incredible. Thank you so much, Robert. I mean, what about you, Paolo? Do you write? Um, I used to. Um, I, I started writing poetry for the age of seven. I, I, I love poetry. Um, I think it should be taught in schools more than it is. Um, and we're, we're losing touch, uh, I think, with, with poetry in general. Um, it's a very sad world in many ways that we live in. Um, and the education system is not what it was when we were mm. younger. I've, I've, done, I've gone to schools and, and, and read these poems. I've also been to the local Feltham Young Offenders Institute and read it to prisoners mm -hmm. at the open mic sessions. And I think there is, um, because we're continued 24-7 switched on, mm. that we've lost the, the very basic thing that we're doing here is just telling each other a story. Mm. This is a story about my father, this is a book, this is a story about um, lost, lost twin syndrome. We need to go back to what we did years ago in caves and just sat around the fire and just, mm. do you know what yeah, I mean? We're, we're losing touch. We're losing yes. touch with ourselves. No, we're, we're losing not. touch we're with our back. senses. We're coming back. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a long, slow but we're, yeah. are. we're more connected. Yeah. We're more connected than ever, but, we, it's, we're but we, that's, mm. it's the reverse. That's the contradiction. That's modern yeah. living. Mm -hmm. So let's, I, I let's say that sorry, the modern yeah. communication uh, has got, got a wrong culture. I, I, I'm a, uh, a political scientist and a mathematician, 
so you can't be more technical than that. But uh, I come back to the literature when I translate a, uh, <coughs> a Chinese opera song into English. For you were Zhang Wen, ma? Wait. To our Chinese viewers over there <laughs> in <laughs> China. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful, oh, wonderful. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for that. Yeah. So it's Old Dairy Boy, A Childhood in Pictures and Poems by Mervyn Cook. Absolutely beautiful book. It's got lots of beautiful photographs and wonderful, wonderful poems in here. And how can people purchase it? Is it available on Amazon? Mm, or um, do you sell it on it's, a website? It's, on, it's online. If you Google Old Dairy Boy, it comes up and it's, 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 on a, it's hosted on, on a website. And you okay. can buy it there. Mm -hmm. So you can buy it if you want to buy a beautiful Christmas present full of feelings and emotion and really gets you here you know i'll come to an open mic session i'll come to an open mic session when uh, yeah and as i say we're doing we've done a story about that and that will be going on soon um or if you want to come on here and do your own poetry we'll put you on as i say we're looking for anyone anyone who wants to express themselves and because of what we were saying before we feel that people have lost touch we're communicating more, as I say, Mala, uh, Mala, the other thing is that they're using their internet too much and phones and we were th talking about this the other day, what would happen if kids couldn't use phones anymore on Facebook and would they just disintegrate? I mean, would they go just go back to reading books yes. and perf acting and connecting and talking? I personally think that maybe we're, we're heading that way and eventually yeah. the world will go back into us sitting around the table and talking. Eventually. Eventually. Mm -hmm. It's I a think. long way off though. Um, but there is a lot of changes. What do you think? I mean, you come from a completely different background. Where, where do you come from? Uh, I'm from Mauritius. Okay. Yeah. And how and is the culture there? Indian ancestry. Right. Yeah, my grandparents were from India. Right. Mm -hmm. And would you say that the culture in Mauritius is more connected that way? People are more connected to each other? They mm. talk uh, more? The older generation, yes. But mm. not, it's almost the same like here. Right. But not the younger generation. They're still, um, you know, very techno. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, if you go to talking about Facebook, um, one of my friends, again, because that's the main way they communicate these days of what we all do, but mainly kids, and um, my friend was telling me he works, um, he teaches piano for a, a, a school, a dance school, and the kids are so nervous that they're going to screw up because they think that, that someone's going to go on Facebook and bully them, <laughs> cyberbullying. And we were thinking of that's one side of it, but to me, I think that it's wonderful. I mean, my, I personally feel that Facebook, if I had a child, I wouldn't let them on it maybe because maybe they're not old enough, they're too impressionable. But to me, from the point of view of the global community, I have God knows how many friends, thousands of friends on Facebook, and they're all full of love. And it's incredible. They're all connected to what you were talking about, spirit. And it's incredible that, you know, people, what Susan was saying about the spirit and the soul, and all connected in some way. And that gives me a lot of hope, because who's going to want to kill their friend in another country when that friend is a friend on Facebook? I mean, I have Arab friends, you know, I'm, I'm, I grew up in Israel. I have a, a Junaid, who I talked about before with the Too Busy to Buy. He's, he's a Muslim, and it's incredible. And we're chatting about that, and that's what, it, what Facebook does, and that's what all this stuff does for us. But we do need to come back to our basic creativity, and a lot of the time, grief. From my point of view, I went through hell with mental illness, and I broke. And once I came out and had my therapy and I came out, I formed theatre and now I form moving on TV because I feel that's what I've always wanted to do. And that's my creativity, banging on the piano, bringing people together, doing all that stuff. So it's been wonderful having you here. Thank you so much, Marvin. It's been a pleasure. It's been, a pleasure. It's been lovely. And if you want to stick around, just uh, going to talk to Paolo now because we haven't given you very much time. No, that's fine. But um, so you're a musician. Yes. You uh, play the keyboards, and we're hoping to hear you eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> well, I play, the, I play the piano more than, the, than a, a keyboard such as that. I, sure. I, I'm very old-fashioned. Right. Um, and um, 
I'm classically trained, so really it's only classical music. It's not to say I can't learn other things, mm. and I'd like to branch out. Yeah. Um, but my repertoire is limited somewhat um, to classic, especially romantic era. Okay. Well, I'm hoping you're gonna, going to try and do some open mics for me when I do PF, which yep. is uh, January, uh, maybe the 27th of December, mm -hmm. because I'm performing in Hampstead, and I need, to, and I'd love to see whether we could work together. Yeah, that would be good. And do a couple of songs. Um, so I mean, do you, do you have you ever played anything like that? Have you ever done any of the PF stuff, which is beautiful stuff? I mean, it is very classical. Yes, it is. It is um, beautiful. No, I haven't. Um, but I'd like to. It's. it's I, I know. I know a couple of PF songs, and um, I'm, I, I can speak French to a fair degree, so mm -hmm. um, it appeals to me. Yeah. Great. And so, what is your passion? I mean, we've got Mervyn <laughs> here. His passion is writing, and that came out of a huge amount of grief. As you said, it's cathartic, and to me, I think the grief gets you right in there. I mean, when I look at everything I've ever done, it's always come from a breakup <laughs> or pain or loss. Everything I've written, everything has come, sometimes it comes from being happy as well. And once you've got through and you're connected to your spirit, I think you can also connect with joy. Mm -hmm. Then you're very lucky. But what would you say um, is your passion and have you been through anything that has brought you to be more creative, would you say? Yeah, yes, that's a tricky one. Um, you're right when you say that it's grief and loss that bring out of us almost more than happiness and joy. Uh, and until one has experienced grief and loss, one can never really almost be complete as a human being. It's very hard to explain. Um, but having said that, I'm speaking hypothetically because I haven't really suffered yet. Um, oh God, yeah, yeah I indeed, you. and um, it needs will, to. yeah, it will, it will make mm. me stronger as a person. I know it mm. will, and it will give me perhaps a different outlook on life because mm. it, it's about being in touch with with our spiritual selves, mm. as as you say, and that can be done through grief and loss, mm. uh, definitely as easier than through happiness. Mm. Um, but there are all sorts of things that make me happy. I mean, what's my passion? I don't know. Um, I love the piano. I love nature. I love the countryside, animals. Mm. Um, That's probably one just, of the reasons you settled in Wickham, because we have you and just... Yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's, it is. I mean, uh, we're, I've, I've just moved house now. I'm in Hazelmere, and um, the, the back of the house looks out onto open fields. And the red mm. kites, we've got so many mm. red kites around there. Mm. And they swoop right down outside a window that we throw food onto the garage roofs. Mm -hmm. And they're right there and they swoop down. Beautiful, glorious mm. creatures. Mm. And this is something that we, we lose. The young of today, they're losing touch with nature. They're losing the, the beauty, the rawness of nature. We're becoming so sterile, so, mm. so, so detached yeah. from our senses, as I said before. And that's, that's, that's sad. Um, mm. And I... I feel sorry. I feel sorry for the youngster. I certainly wouldn't want to be a youngster growing up today. And although you can say, oh, well, every generation says that, I think it's worse now. I think things have moved on so, so much at pace, mm. so quickly, quickly, that things have changed in such a short space of time. Mm. And that's down to technology, as you were saying before. Yeah. Um, and technology, for all its, all the good things that it brings us, um, I don't know. We're almost becoming too desensitized. Of course, we are. Yeah. yeah. Too, too civilised. I mean, Jung, you know, Carl Gustav Jung, the psychologist, he said, uh, too much of the animal distorts the civilised man, mm. but too much civilization makes sick animals. And that's what's happening. We're becoming yeah. so civilised that we're, we're losing touch with our, our animal mm. selves. Um, and we're becoming sick as a result, I feel. I, I agree that there's a lot of that going on, but I also agree, believe that there's a lot of children that are being introduced in different ways. The shame Helen's not here. She was supposed to come. Um, she teaches a lot of that. She teaches yoga. She takes kids back into nature. That's good. Uh, working with the bees. Actually, we were thinking of running a buzzy bee workshop. We're teaching kids about music and bees and creativity. And there is a lot going on because I believe there's a lot of new souls that are coming back. That that's how I see it spiritually, and we've got to change. We have. We've got There's to no change, because if not, we're not going to be able to survive. But yeah. coming back to what the thing about grief and how, because in a way, grief to me is connected to attachments. And if you're too attached to people, places or whatever, or things, then you grieve. Like you take away someone's phone and they're going crazy nowadays because you're too attached. I am too attached to my mobile. 
But when we lose a, someone, as you were saying, your dad, I'm talking about the lost twin thing. It feels like you literally have, have, have lost a part of yourself. But who's to say that we're meant to attach? I mean, Buddhism says that it's not good for us, that we're meant to not attach. And I think it's, to me, I think we're meant to be happy. I think we've been put here to be joyful, happy souls and learn things along the way. And to make so, others happy. Definitely, and to yeah. make others happy by Absolutely. being happy. I think that's the only goal. Yeah. And someone said to me, why are you not happy? You know, I've done, I did a training course called Teachers of God or Teachers of Love, because to me God is love. And in that there was a question, ask yourself why I'm not happy. Why are you not happy? Oh, because that person has left, or because I haven't got enough money, or because of this. So, but it, sometimes, I'm not being patronising, if you bring yourself back into the moment, like now, we're all sitting together, do we need anything? In the second, we need nothing. There's water in the kitchen, there's warmth here, you know, we're all together, we're safe, we're not living in a country like the beautiful Sharbat Gula over there, Morris, if you can film uh, this p painting, Jesus is the young right. Afghanistani child. Look at her eyes. Look at the fear. We didn't grow Well, I did grow up in Israel. I grew up with a lot of fear. But not anymore. I'm free. I love England because we all live here together. So to a certain extent, stay in this moment yeah. and peace. There you go. Yeah, peace. you're right. We spend far too long worrying about the future mm. and thinking about the past, the past and exactly. not living in the moment. That's it, and we get stuck sometimes, of but you do. have used the past to move on, sorry, and I think that's what creative beings do, they take their pain and they move on, that's yeah. what we do, and then you can create a better future, but you have to let it come up as well, you sure. have to let that pain come up, because if not then you get, you stagnate it, you stagnate. So anyway, so we've had a wonderful, wonderful uh, program today. Loads and loads of great guests. And my phone was here somewhere because I did have one more thing that came through on Facebook, but not from this, because <laughs> we're not streaming live yet. Um, apparently there's a company that re is ringing up people. I'll tell you in a minute when it comes up. But they ring you up and they tell you they want they need to take over your computer. Oh, yeah. You've heard about it yes. from Facebook. Windows, yeah. You've got to be very, very careful because they're creating a virus or something. Mm. I did speak the other day also about a company that when you, um, uh, towards Christmas, because we're doing a watchdoggy, watchdoggy, if you've got any problems, send them to me. I'll tell you the addresses in a minute. Uh, if you get a card through your door with a, a number on it, it says you've got a parcel, yeah. Don't ring that number. It charges three hundred pounds oh to call. God. It's an O nine something number, so it's similar. But uh, this company, I think they're called Microsoft something. I think you're right. Um, so I picked it up on Facebook. Uh, PC experts, okay? PC experts. I mean, God, today we've talked about so much. I want to hear your stories. I want. I want to hear everything. I want you all here in the studio telling us about how we're going to make the world a better place and you can contact me at twitter okay you can tweet me tweet me you used to have that tweet me you can tweet me at moving on tv you can like us on facebook moving on tv